Okay, it has been a long time since I've been able to post. I've been super busy with work. But I saw this cool little thread on complex surface transitions on the Rhino Forum. And um, I thought there was just a lot of really cool teachable stuff in there. And uh, I got called out as, as a help. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. Um, and so I thought it would be a really cool exercise to show, um, you know, obviously the original poster uh, has his solution. He's having some troubles with it um, and showing how I think this could be done better. Like how would, how would I do it, right? There's certainly more than one, ways, one way to do this. As you can see in the thread, I'm going to be posting a link to the thread below. Uh, there's, there's of course, more than one way to do it, um, but I think the way that I'll show you is the most direct and simple, the most teachable, and uh, should hopefully make the most sense. So, And uh, the original files are here to download if you want them. I would highly encourage you to download them. I'll, I'll probably post my file, but really the, you know, the, the learning here is in the doing. Uh, so I would say, uh, yeah, download the files yourself. Okay, so this is what we get when we open the file. Uh, there's a couple different layers here. Uh, there's a layer called primary surfaces. I'm a big fan of that. Um, that's That shows me that the person's definitely on the right track. They're thinking about the right things. And then there's the, the poster's uh, solution here. And uh, yeah, it's it's not bad, uh, but I think a lot of this could very much be improved. Um, I'm not going to do a full step by step on this. I'm going to do a little bit like cooking show style, where I you know prep all the ingredients, then I show you the final product and I talk about what it takes to get there. Um, so the first thing that I would say is that, you know, looking at these primary surfaces, there's a little bit, these could be better, right? This, we're on the right track, but these could definitely be better. Um, when I look at this final object, what I see is basically excluding this front area, which is the difficult blend that we're dealing with, but all this stuff, this is basically a square with blended corners, right? And so I think that, um, and uh, I, I think that the surfaces should reflect that. Right, so the fact that this is kind of smushed into one surface here, um, to me, that's not how I would do it. I would have, you know, there is there is a little straight bit here that's good. I would have this be a surface that goes to here, and then I would have a, another surface that comes out and and meets this here. Um, you know, one thing that you know I notice when I look at this is like you've got very funny isocurve spacing, I and mean, that's just. Usually when you've got really weird isocurve spacing, there's something non-uniform about your surfaces, and uh, that, that can be kind of a deep dive, like what is non-uniform, but what I found is that non-uniform surfaces can present trouble when you're matching things to them. So I try to avoid non-uniform surfaces unless there's an absolute need for them, and in this case, in my opinion, there's not a real need for non-uniform surfaces. So... Uh, let's see. And But what really catches my eye, first of all, if these are the primary surfaces, uh, if you remember in one of my previous videos, I say before you go G1, G2, G, you know, if you're, you know, if you're, you're going tangent or a curvature blend, if you're doing blends, and this is all about blends, right? First, you have to go G0. All this stuff has to positionally meet. And you see, like, this surface here doesn't actually come out and meet this surface here, right? There's, these things are not, um, uh, like, like this needs to be longer, this needs to be shorter, right? These can be trimmed. So as primary surfaces go, these are along the right track, but they're not actually, to my mind, finished. So since we're just talking about this this blend here, and for the purposes of what I'm doing, we're calling this symmetrical left and right. We're calling it symmetrical top and bottom too. So uh, you can just do a quarter of this and mirror it both top and bottom and left and right, right? No need to do extra work. So I took these surfaces, I copied them, and I turned them into my primary surfaces. And so 
what I would say the real primary surfaces are here, right, is, is something more like this, right? And this is now a single span surface that meets this, and this is a single span surface here. It's just an extrusion back, right? This is a planar surface that's been trimmed, and this is a planar surface that's been trimmed. And, and especially with planar surfaces, you can always trim them like this. You don't need to explicitly make the edges. You can overbuild them, trim them back. But when we're dealing with these non-planar surfaces here, this extrusion and this surface that's really more of a freeform surface, we want everything to meet up G0, right, before we go and blend these things. So, you know, this has the same point count and degree along this edge as this one does. And so they match up perfectly, right? So this is what we want. You know, this is what I would say are, are the real primary surfaces. This is where we can start. And the first thing to notice when we go back and look at the forum here, the forum post, is, you know, I see this right here as, as a blend. And there's an order of operations to blends. You, you always want to start with the biggest blends and do those first and then go towards your smaller blends and, and work in a, in a sort of downward hierarchy in terms of size, right? So, so the first thing to tackle, this, this right here is far and away our biggest blend. It's blending from this top surface down to this sort of this concave surface here, right? And so, and so our, our final surface is going to have to have a blend there, right? And then what I see the rest of this stuff is I see this is a blend that traces along that, that edge that we create once we blend this, right? And then this is another blend that just meets up with this blend here. And this could be done as a Y blend. There's a, a couple different ways of doing this. I'll show you how I solved this. I solved it in, a, I think, a, the most simple way to solve it. And uh, yeah, so let's go back to what I did here. Awesome. So I'm just going to skip to my final surfaces. Uh, again, to me, the teachable thing here is really about patch layout and workflow and not... I, I frankly just don't have the time today to go through and do like a complete step-by-step. -step. This would actually be surprisingly long <laughs> to really do it step-by-step, -step, and I don't have time for that. So I just sort of blasted through it, and, and then we're going to talk about, you know, what do we have here and how do we get there. So like I said, the first thing to do, the first thing that I did was trim back this surface here, and trim back this surface and make a blend between the two of them, right? Because that's our biggest blend. And then everything from there on this stuff is really pretty easy. But there's, there's one thing to think about here, which is that there's an interdependence between this, this blend here and this blend here. And, and there's a constraint, if you will, so the bigger that you want this blend to be, then the bigger this blend needs to be. And the reason is we need to be able to turn the corner here and we want to make sure that we, we don't run out of room so that we, we can still have a, a finite edge length here so that we don't collapse this thing into essentially a, a three-sided problem because we want to keep it a four-sided patch, right? So the first thing I did was just use my split to trim this back, you know, split by isocurve. I did the same thing here. I made this blend here. And I used that blend to trim this original, let me switch back, to trim this original surface out, right? And then I trimmed these out. I trimmed the, these edges out. And I created these as blends here. Now, full disclosure, because what I did was I blasted through this quickly. I used VSR. So all this stuff is possible with Rhino commands. If you go back through my tutorials and I show you how to make all these surfaces really clean and nice, all this is possible. But for the sake of just getting this done today, I just blasted through it with VSR. But 
the ideas are all the same. You know, so all of these are single span surfaces. Uh, well, this one is not. This one has an extra span, and the degree has been bumped up. When I talk about, in my matching video, how you run into a practical limitation matching. You know, so, so these are all curvature. This is just tangency. You know, this is this this is the surface in this model, this part of this model that's doing the most work. And this is the hardest one to actually get to curvature. So, but it looks, right? So if I turn this off, this all looks super legit. Nice and smooth, right? Design intent, the way it should be. Yeah. So Going back to what I said, though, there's an interdependence between the size of this blend and the size of these blends. You want to make sure that these blends are smaller than this blend in order for all this to work out nicely, right? Or roughly the same size. The same size or smaller. So you can see that's what I did here. This is a little bit bigger than these, right? Now, to finish off this corner here, this is all pretty simple with very, with a couple little minor exceptions, right? Like this surface here is just a blend between this surface here. I just, I just trimmed the edge back, you know, I trimmed the edge on this and I did a blend here across here to this. I split this by isocurve. I split this by the same isocurve that lined up. Same thing here. I trimmed this surface. I trimmed this surface and I made a blend across Right? Curvature continuous blend. Boom. Then what I did, I, I I brought this in, you know, I created a curve here to trim it so that it met with the edge of this, right? Because it's sort of we've got we've got the beginning for patch layout to work here. We've got to have one surface that goes to here. And then another, another surface that goes across here. So they, they share this edge here. So there's one edge here. We're going to two edges here, right? And this is all just done with, with matching, with blending. And then the real trick here, like the trick, it's pretty simple, but we've got just another trimmed corner right here on this planar surface. And when you, when you have trimmed corners on planar surfaces, this stuff tends to work out very, very easily, very well, as long as these are well done and uh, you, all your surrounding geometry is well done. So... Um, but really, you know, so like I said, this is the main thrust of what I wanted to show here was patch layout, right? So, you know, thinking about these things, you know, that your primary surfaces have to go to, to positional, to G0 first, right? And then thinking about, well, all right, which ones do I blend first? Well, you blend the biggest ones first, and then you go to the smaller ones from there, right? There's a lot of detail and subtlety in this. Um, this is, you know, uh, you know, this took me probably 45 minutes, like just trying to blast through it. Um, so this is deceptively quote unquote easy. I wouldn't say that this is easy. Um, but the real thing to think about here, like I said, is patch layout and workflow. And I think that this shows it really well, right? So, you know, A-being it with the original posters material, right? So there's, you know, I would have liked to have seen this this sort of a, a trimmed corner here, right? This is a little, and then the other thing that I notice is that, you know, the, the, the seams of these blends don't quite make too much sense, right? So like a lot of this blend here kind of feels flat. I'm not sure if we're getting anything from a design intent standpoint of having the blend start here. Like, you know, uh, this this feels like it should be flat, right? Sort of in, to about here. And that's why I trimmed mine the way that I did, right? Um, and then sort of same thing here. Like this doesn't quite make too much sense. There's no, it doesn't make sense that the trim, like that this blend here would, st would start on a straight line here. This blend should start, you know, on a curve of a planar surface, right? So... Like I said, right. So this blend should just exist like this, right? So anyway, I hope you find this useful. I've been uh, really busy, but I'm hoping to get back to doing 
the primary surfing singing series, which is almost finished. And then we're going to start doing some real honest to God, start to finish, uh, example projects. And I'm really, really excited about those. So anyway, uh, thanks so much. Like comment, subscribe. I hope you got something out of this video. Take care.